and get another one. <laughs> Unless you make conscious effort to sit down and learn. Hello, welcome. My name is Obinda. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today I want to share with you class, your financial class. Which category are you? Are you poor? Are you rich? Or you don't know about trouble you, you are in between? <laughs> so, welcome, share the channel with your friends, share the channel with your, with everybody that you think uh, will be interested in this. So there is a class, there is a class that they have done, a lot of studies on, you can search them, they call them the socio-economic class, you know, and most places you go there you see the upper class, the middle class, and the, you know, the, the poor uh, class, the, the working poor and the working class all kind of things there's uh lower middle income you know upper middle income middle middle income they have all those around but uh, much of it they use your uh, the, the, how much money you make in every year you know how much money you make in every year and some of it they use the level of education that you have and the kind of work that you do you know and you can see that uh, when it comes to employment you know, you know because most of this this category most most often maybe 99 percent of it is more of you know, people have built companies and you work there and they pay you, uh, let's say, 100,000 every year. They pay you 10,000 every year, you know. So let's say you are in Ghana and you make 1,000 cities a month. So the whole year you have 12,000 Ghana cities, you know. And most people who make 12,000 Ghana cities a year, maybe they have just as education or as education, you know. Some people are paid 5,000 a month. And so, so they make 60,000 Ghana cities. Okay? Those guys may have higher education more than uh, the SHS level you know so um, you have to decide you have to decide but for me life is what you create even though they have this um, classification they have these cat categories but life is what you create it's not the one that somebody has designed for you you know and so even if you want to educate yourself let's say you completed SHS and your parents died and you didn't have anywhere to go or maybe you completed SSS and nobody supported you and you wanted to create the life that you want you so desire it takes time, but then you can create. Somebody may have gone to university, and maybe the course that they did, they thought that that was not a good course at all. So <laughs> they see themselves as if those people who didn't go to anything. So they are waiting for somebody. They said, hey, even if I had that next course, they would have had a good job. In our economy, most often, it's not just job. In Ghana, it's not just job. It's you deciding to say that, what can I do to make money? What can I do to make money? And you being organized in terms of your thoughts and in terms of your life and looking for the right solutions right information right knowledge uh, to build your life so let's say you are 25 years old you just completed school or 20 years old you just completed school set yourself to say that the next 20 the next 30 years i want to be uh, very knowledgeable and i want to have high level of finance and, and independence in terms of finance you know and i want to even create the job the, the work that i'm very proud of that one nobody can create for you is you where you say that this is the life that I want to live. And so we are in 2023. You say that 2020, 2033, I'm a young man, 20 years. By the time that I'm 43 years, I'm going to create a life. You have to decide. And this one is independent, whether you have engineering degree or mathematics degree or you have a medical degree or you have accounting or you didn't go to anything at all. You can decide to say that this is what, what I, I share today, what I, what I speak about, the things that you know I share. Much of it, I decided to study, to re-educate and say that this is the life that I want, to, I want to have, you know. So a lot of things, the books that we wrote, you know, even the channels that we created, um, the businesses that we run, we decided to say this is what we want to do, you know, define what you want to become. You know, you decide to say that, okay, they have classifications. For me, in Ghana, if you have, let's say, if you make about twelve or 15,000 a year cities, you, they will consider you as not rich, you know. You know, you're not rich because <laughs> all the money will be gone in the whole year. So if they pay you 1,000 cities, you know you're going to struggle financially a little bit, you know, especially if you have family. If you're single, maybe you can save some money. And if you make, let's say, in the middle, they make about maybe uh, 2000 to 5000 a month, you know, those kind of people. They can make maybe 60000 or less. They, with family, are not worthy, you know. And anybody who makes maybe 100000 or more, those people, they have money. They have money. And there are people like that. And those who are making 100000 or more every year, Ghana cities, are not on salaries. 
90-99% of them are not on salaries. Majority of them are people who have uh, shops, who have mechanic shops, who have uh, their farms, those who have their own businesses. Those people are in charge of their finances. They are in charge of their own destiny and they are not waiting for help. Which means that the people with degrees waiting for somebody to employ you, even if they employ you, there is a category that you cannot go beyond unless you're stealing. And you know that if you steal, by all means, you'll be caught. And so even those our families that live outside the continent, you know, when they say that we are very rich, we are very rich. But if you know the facts, you know that they are not rich. For instance, those who live in England, <laughs> you know, every year, the poor, the thousand or less pounds every year. So if you're in that category, they see you as poor. And then they, they have the, the one they call working poor. You know, those people, they're 10,000 or something. And they have the ones they call middle class. They are making maybe 18,000 to maybe 40,000 or so. They call them middle class. This one, there is, there is, there is, there is a, what they call a tax involved. You have, not, you have not eaten anything from it. That's how much. And then maybe anybody who makes about 100,000 pounds or more. They will consider as, as as maybe somebody who is wealthy and a lot of these people are salaried you know so when you're Ghanaian and you live in england for instance and you're making let's say twenty thousand pounds which most people are not making anyway <laughs> so majority of the people would have to do one two three jobs in order for them to make let's say thirty thousand pounds a year without taxes so how many can save fifty thousand so the house that he has to build Somebody would have to give them a loan to do that. The, the, the school that they have to go, somebody would have to give them a loan to do that. The car, somebody would have to give them. Go to America, the same thing. Majority of the people are around $50,000 a year salary. Majority, maybe 80% of them. You know, taxes included. So if you ask them, a million, they don't have it. Unless they take mortgage and they say that the houses have increased somewhere and so when they sell it those kind of imaginations that they, they do now if we had the same thing in ghana you don't think that we a lot of us will be wealthy that you get all the all that you have to do is get a job and somebody else will give you loan and then that loan and uh, that house will be appreciating and later you work and they sell it and something like that. that's an easy way to make money or maybe you have some of the other you know the things that the insurance and then the things that you contribute and later they say that you have money those things but in ghana what you have to do is use your creative mind and go to work start a business read about finance that's how you change your financial class you know so even if you don't have a job that could be a blessing then there's no just be proud that i want to start a cocoa farm i want to start a maize farm i want to start cassava farm i want to start anything that people need in my community okro look at just selling and farming look at those categories short-term farming things that people need every day in the economy and ta tell yourself i want to make ten thousand from it every year twenty thousand thirty thousand hundred thousand you can do that it's a matter of you studying it majority of our people have not studied what works and what makes money in our economy and that is why they say that they are poor even if you are selling on your head and you can begin at that stage if you have good understanding of what you're doing and you have good understanding of finance you can change that within five years and move from making 10,000 a year to uh, 50,000 to 100,000 a year. All that our people need is strong financial knowledge, strong understanding, awareness of their environment and awareness of the world as a whole. You know, so my name is Fabi Daku. Today I'm talking about class, financial class. Study it so that a lot of people will, you know, bamboozle you with all this data as if you are poor. But really you are not poor. You just don't have uh, construction. You don't, they, they, you don't have right understanding of how things are being run in this world and uh, i'm saying that they use finance they use high le your level of education and the kind of work that you do and they say they have poor or the working poor you know and they have the people they call the middle class so in ghana a lot of the people who are teaching and you know police officers they say that they are in the middle class so me i don't know and then uh, they say that some people are very rich they are they talk but for me ghana is that Ghana does not have to or Africa does not have to buy those categories because a lot of those categories they are built with different uh, uh, economic infrastructure what we have to do is look at what you can make more than what you eat you know if you're able to build a house without loan you are not poor if you're able to buy your car without loan you're not poor if you have investment you have some cocoa farm somewhere if you have a business that brings some money you're not poor don't let anybody tell you that if you convert it to dollar don't convert it to dollar because it's not dollar we use yes when the dollar changes there are things that because we have built our economy on importation if you could change that the dollar will not be relevant to the way we classify our finances and our wealth 
you know if i'm not importing a lot of things then i don't i don't care what the dollar uh, does but unfortunately we have a lot of educated people who have been who have been educated and uh, with these structures in mind and so they don't know what to do to build an independent economy that will not be affected so much by somebody pulling some strings somewhere you know so that are you saying that just because the dollar moves somewhere your house has de devalued <laughs> because the dollar in somebody's country no you still have your house that you live in yes of course some things some some inflation has cut you know, must, may, may have gone up a lot of things may, may have gone up because we are depending so much on importation that's our problem you know if we're able to structure some things to so much depend on what we produce then many of the things can be stabilized for a long time so my name is open today i'm talking about classification so don't decide that you can start poor and you can move through and become wealthy and the wealthy is not the Forbes kind of wealthy I'm talking about. Is you being able, you let's say you use two thousand every month, but you have ten thousand coming in, you are not poor. Maybe you use ten thousand every month, but you have a million coming in, you are not poor. You know, and that is the kind of thing that you build. And I'm saying that every one of us can build uh, from the level that we are from the level that we are so i want to say thank you very much uh, for taking your time to watch the financial class you choose yours decide which class you want to play and uh, fight for financial freedom don't let your education or your profession limit you don't even let your family background be a problem for you every one of us can educate ourselves can structure can walk out of the pain rig, out of the struggles and be where you really want to be it's a decision it takes time but with right character, right consistency, right vision, and right people around you, you can do this, right discipline. And never forget to every day educate yourself. You know, every day educate yourself. That's how life is. Educate yourself with the right things. Don't wait for some, something somewhere supernaturally to happen to you to change your finances. That is not for the strong. The strong is not waiting for miracle. The strong believes that they are able to build whatever God has given them. You know, and that is the kind of psyche that you need. Don't wait for Lotto. Don't wait that Dachi Dachi be a me do That may never happen. And even if you win, you have the ability to, to keep it. You know, and that comes from the knowledge and the skill sets that you have. So I want to say thank you very much for taking your time to watch it.